All right, guys, just want to make sure I had everybody correctly. We have joining Coach Fogarty. We have uh, Josh Tevis, Max Becker, and Ryan Furlan. Um, one quick side note on tonight, in the history of the men's ECAC Hockey Championship, uh, there's only been one seven seed uh, to ever win the tournament um, prior to tonight, and that was actually Princeton back in 1998. It defeated Clarkson in overtime, five to four. <laughs> so, ironic. All right, we'll start out with uh, some questions for the student athletes. Again, um, raise your hands, same routine, right up front with Nate. Uh, from Max, Nate Owen, USCHO. You guys are now on a seven game winning streak. Um, you won four games in all freshman years. How does that put in perspective how far you guys have come over these last three years or four years? Yeah, we've definitely come a long way in the last four years. Um, I think it's been a testament to all the classes that have come through Princeton. Uh, it's a pretty surreal moment to have got here in the first place and then also to, to get the championship this weekend. So, uh, yeah, it's true. We had four wins up my freshman year, and that, we've had a lot more than that in the playoffs this year. So uh, it's been a, a pretty big turnaround. Good. Tessa Moore, ICTV. Um, Max, you scored the game winning goal. Can you walk us through that? How did it feel? And for the rest of you, what was your vantage point on that goal and your reaction? Um, Jermaine made a great play. He was going around the net and just left it there for me. And I had to whack at it and had to take a second one. Um, and it went in. And I can't really explain anything after that. I mean, like there, there are no words that can describe those feelings. It's incredible to uh, share this with all my teammates and with this special group of guys. I actually didn't really see the play, but I just saw the guys jumping over the boards, and that's all I needed to see to know we uh, we'd won that. So it's quickly over the boards fall, and then my gloves were off just about as fast as that. So great, uh, great goal by Bex. Yeah, I didn't really see much of you guys. Kind of saw the puck bounce out to Bex, and I was running just kind of like everyone else, just as hard as I could to file. It's pretty fun. Cap. <coughs> Uh, for Josh, I was wondering if you just talk about the job you guys did defensively in this game against Carson. Yeah, I got to give a big uh, shout out to the decor, uh, <laughs> our defensive group. We kind of banded together this year, and uh, our defensive game is something that we've worked a lot on and uh, hasn't always been there, but we take a lot of pride in it. So I think uh, we had a big belief that we could lead from the back, and I think that's what we did, and we held them uh, to a really tough defensive game for them against a pretty powerful offensive team. So. We knew our offense was going to step in there and help us out. We just had to do our job. So really proud of the effort of the decor. And obviously, Furley played a huge role in that. Um, and uh, can't say enough about him. He's done a ton for us this year. So I think our defensive game is something we take a lot of pride in and something that's going to help us moving forward uh, going into next weekend. Justin? Starts. Starts. Uh, Justin Rizier, ICTV. You guys scored an early one in the first off, off two on one and then didn't score obviously until the OT, and of course, nutty goal at the end of uh, regulation, but how'd you keep your composure, not scoring all that time and then having to go into OT for it? Um, I think that uh, as the coaching staff and the, the kind of older guys on our team, like we've been through a lot in the last four years, and so we've been able to kind of like take those experiences and turn them into references and, and be able to move through uh, moments like that. Um, I think that like, uh, we do a pretty good job of remaining poised and in control, uh, especially in like the face of adversity like that. So we never wavered. Uh, even when they scored us six seconds left, we came back in the locker room and we're like, we still have this. Like, everyone, we're just playing our game. So. Good. Charlie Novak, ICTV. Knowing that the crowd would be a, would be a Clarkson home crowd mostly throughout the game. What was it like scoring a game-winning goal for you, Max, and silencing the mostly home Clarkson crowd? Uh, I wasn't really focused on silencing the Clarkson crowd. It's more of sharing it with, with our teammate, like our team. Um, I, it was an incredible moment, something I'll remember for the rest of my life. And uh, I'm just happy to be able to share it with my teammates and with the fans that came all the way up here to Lake Placid. My parents specifically flew all the way out from California to be here this weekend. So it was pretty cool to, to share the moment with all of our fans and all the people who've been supporting this program rather than like taking it from Clarkson. How about you, Ryan? Do you feel um, the crowd at all, or are you just focused on? Uh, no, not, not really. I mean, especially after playing Cornell yesterday, it's the same kind of thing. Uh, you get used to it. A lot of teams we play on the road have really rowdy crowds, so you kind of tune it out. And it's not like you're not really playing against them. I mean, you're playing against the other team, and yeah, that's the outcome. But if you read into it all, it really only hurts your game. So not, not much at all. Thanks, Josh. 
Yeah, Josh Stephen College Hockey News. Um, Ryan, can you talk about the defense over the last few weeks? I mean, it's really, really come together there. How is it having a guy like Josh uh, in front of you? Yeah, it's awesome. But the last few weeks, he's really uh, done a great job of boxing out. It's like even when we give up a lot of shots, everything's from the outside. I'm, I'm seeing everything, so it's nothing too tough like, as long as you can control my rebounds. And then the guy like Josh, I mean, he's always able to you know make up for everyone else's mistakes, get pucks up dangerous areas. You know, it's great having back there. Cap. I know that's kind of awkward because he's sitting right up there with you, but can you guys just talk about what Coach Fogarty has done for your program since he's been there and what you like about playing for him? Uh, I think like the, the kind of results speak for themselves. Uh, we, uh, we're in a very different culture in, when it was 2015, my freshman year. And we've been able to like kind of mold this together, like the coaching staff through the senior class every year um, to, to create something really special that hopefully will last beyond 2018. Yeah, just to add on to that, we've just had a belief, and it's come from Ron all the way through through our uh, entire program that we're going to get here and we're going to win a championship. And I think uh, from day one, obviously, with um, some of the tough times we had until tonight, I think that belief has never wavered. And uh, it's a testimony to Ron and uh, the other coaches as well. It's just a constant belief and not giving up in the face of adversity and continuing to improve. And, get better and uh, the results will show for themselves. So I think that's a testimony from the leadership from the top to the bottom. Go ahead, sure. <laughs> Ryan, for you, you let up an early one against Cornell, you let up a really late one against Clarkson, other than that, absolutely nothing. How much has your confidence grown throughout these couple days of late classes, and how much do you think it's going to grow going forward into the tournament? Yeah, I mean, I definitely have felt good the last two days. Like, it's been beneficial for the whole team really playing well in front of me. Uh, Definitely have a lot of confidence like everything everyone does right now going to the tournament, you know, so we'll keep it going forward. Uh, yeah, it's been kinda of crazy. One at the beginning, one at the end, but I mean at the end of the day, all that matters is we won both games and we're moving forward. Anything else for the student athletes? All right guys, uh, once again congratulations. Uh, we'll be watching tomorrow, selection Sunday. Starts at noon, a half hour show on ESPNU. All right, congratulations, Coach. Job well done. If you want to start us off with a brief statement on this the tournament, tonight's game, and we'll field a few questions. I think the, the whole experience for our, our players at Princeton coming in on Wednesday and obviously through tonight was just first class by everybody who uh, put this tournament on. It's uh, such a special place to come to where you have a captive audience that uh, love college hockey or passionate fans. We saw it last night with Cornell you know, and the Clarkson tonight and even our fans that make the, the long six hour trek up north and uh, you know I thought we had it and you know with the penalty and it was a great kill and then um, you know it was six seconds left you know and we start to think what happened last night with uh, Clarkson Harbor game and we knew to be resilient and uh, I didn't see Max's goal you know I just and uh, I was ready for the next line and everyone jumped and I jumped as well too and uh, but uh, it, it was a great experience for our guys and and to win a championship, uh, as I said last night, it's so tough to get here because of how good the teams are in the ECAC. Um, so once you get here, you have to try to you know, make the most of it because you never know if you're gonna get back. You know, it's just that tough to, to win a championship in any conference. Uh, so to uh, win in overtime and having the guys spill over the top of the bench is uh, pretty special to see that occur with our student athletes. Thank you, Coach. We'll open it up to questions. Sure. As Max said, this freshman year, you guys won four games. How have you te seen your team evolve over the past few years to this point? We had, we had a plan, and, and uh, we stuck with it. You know, and, and even <coughs> when uh, we lose 23 games, we, we knew that just keep working on the systems and structure we wanted to see uh, would pay off in the end. And we knew it would take some time. And um, hopefully for this moment, you never know when it's going to come. But we knew we were playing the right way in our second year. Max's sophomore year, and then uh, we're losing a lot of one goal games, but they were tighter. And then uh, last year to get around 500 was pretty critical for our, our program, but to win that first playoff series against Colgate, we scored with one second left to go. 
uh, to send uh, that game in overtime. Um, and then just you know it, it's been steamrolling here, right? like I said, after the Harvard and Dartmouth series. And uh, our guys have really buckled down on the defensive side of the, the game as well, too, that realizing that great de defense can lead to great transition offense. And uh, you know, Ryan Furland has done a great job for us. And look at his numbers you know, uh, from the Brown series through Union uh, last night against uh, Cornell and tonight. He's, uh, he's a gamer. Charlie? Well, that's our game plan, though, to use the speed, and, and they were jumping on our, our east to west game with their, their four check, you know, so we couldn't really get our puck possession game going. So we had to alter a little bit about moving the puck north quicker and having the underneath support. Uh, but they're they're a great team. They're going to go deep into the tournament. I think Cornell and Clarkson, you know, they're going to be formidable threats in, in the national tournament. They're just very good teams, different styles, well coached, and they have a lot of skilled players. So our, our game plan didn't change because of, you know, they're playing later at night. And then, uh, you know, we were playing in a prevent defense, you know, in the third. And then, uh, you know, over time, we, we went back to our game plan. I think we had five shots, you know, right off the bat and then scored the game winner. Justin? Coach, the, the cards seem to be stacked against you this the end of the season then you have to face number two, then number one, and then number three. How did you convince this team to, to bet on themselves and to win this championship? And I hate to sound corny, do you feel at least a little bit like Herb Brooks? No. Uh, at first, there's no betting in NCAA, so they didn't bet on themselves. Um, no, I, it, it's, like I said, it, it, the guys believed in the system structure and believed that our offense could you no know, cash in any time, which we do. We're very opportunistic with our offensive game. And so we had to realize that uh, there's different styles from Brown, you know, different styles from Union and uh, Cornell, and a, a very different style from Clarkson. And so the attention to detail of how we had to play, particularly to defend through the neutral zone, was key in all four series. Uh, and then just being patient, realize that we have players that can step up and score. Uh, you know, Grande was one. You know, the Grande, Jermaine, and Becker line was was a catalyst for us. You know, throughout the playoffs. You know, and uh, you look at secondary scoring, we had tertiary scoring. Our third line cashed in incredible times for us. Cap. I have two questions. Uh, first, I was wondering what, what goes through your mind when you're Counting down those last 10 seconds and a goal like that goes in as a coach or a player, what's just kind of your initial emotion when that happens? Well, that countdown stopped at seven, yeah. so it wasn't that good. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a 60-minute it's a game, and our message into the uh, third period was like, hey, whatever happens, you know, they may get a break. we got to keep going our system. Maybe in overtime we'll keep playing uh, five-on-five hockey and, and keep uh, with our system and structure. Uh, and keep playing hard, uh, but it, it's tough. Like, you give up a goal that late, it's tough. So we had to go in and be really uh, have a good thing to motivate the guys back up and keep believing that, you know, in January if someone told us you, know, you go to overtime for a championship, everyone would take it. So we just went around the room and started naming names who would score the game winner. We didn't say Becker, so he must have had a chip on his shoulder and got it done. <laughs> uh, the other thing I was asking was obviously early in your career you looked at questions of the system. So what are some things you learned from that experience that you? It's a passionate program. You know, they expect to win. You know, at, at Clarkson, it's every year they expect to win. And uh, that's the philosophy we're bringing to Princeton. Expect to win, don't hope to win. And uh, I, I told Casey before the game, if we happen to lose, you know, he's the right guy to lose to. I think he's done a great job in seven years of bringing the program back to where it should be and the expectations are. He has a great team, has done a great job of, uh, of recruiting. Uh, and I, I like Clarkson a lot, you know. and. To beat him is sweet, and, and uh, if it went the other way, it'd still sting a lot. But I, I highly respect uh, Casey when he's done there, and I, I greatly respect uh, you know the Clarks University. Sure. Or Nate up front first. Uh, you mentioned the defense coming together the last month or so. Um, is that something the coaching staff tweaked, or is it the players kind of stepping up um, on their own? To, to I think make it just it just morphed into playing smarter hockey. You no, know? and again, the neutral zone is so key in college sports, no, in college sports, college hockey, and, and we started to have that third guy pushing and, and preventing a lot of the, the clean skates in the neutral zone. And then we, with an offensive team, there's a lot of players that want to make a move at the blue line, and we were turning a, a lot of pucks over the blue line midway through the season, and we started to, to take care of the puck, learning how to manage the puck, learning how to win by doing those uh, three things. And 
And we're ECAC champions now because of it. Right. Coach, you guys only took two penalties tonight. Take us through how important it was for your team to like stay disciplined throughout the game. Again, you have many weapons, Ramp on the back door, you know, Strum. They're a great team, and our penalty kill did a great job, too, of, of taking away backdoor looks through the seams. Um, but it, I thought we did a good job of uh, you know, scouting them. And uh, like I said, it, it's, it's the third line and special teams usually wins you no know, championships, and our third line did, and our special teams. Was that even today? Um, it, it's, it's the difference from winning and losing at this point of the season it is so, the margin is so small that uh, you have to make sure that if it's a t you're taking a penalty, it's a smart penalty. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's so tight. Other questions for Coach Fogarty out there? Mm -hmm. All right, Harry, now we'll let you get back to celebrate. I will. Excellent job. Thanks, everyone. Good job. Thanks,